and welcome to lecture 13 of module 2 of this course on accelerator physics. In today's lecture, we learn about the radio frequency quadrupole or the RFQ, which is a type of linear accelerator which is used particularly at low velocities. Now, from the previous lectures, we have learned how RF acceleration can be done using time varying fields. We have learned how to generate these electric fields in linear cavities because we utilize the electric fields associated with the electromagnetic waves in a high Q cavity. So how the electric fields are generated in the linear cavities. So since these are electromagnetic waves that we are using inside the cavity, we have studied about the electromagnetic waves, their propagation in free space between two parallel conducting planes, waveguides and cavities. We have also studied some accelerating structures, a simple structure like a pillbox cavity, we studied this in detail and uh, we saw the different modes, how the field patterns look like and we also studied about the drift tube linac. We studied about the travelling wave and standing wave structures, so uh, how a hollow, uniform hollow waveguide cannot be used for acceleration and if you load it with uh, periodic obstacles then the loaded structure, in the loaded structure the phase velocity is brought down and then that can be used for acceleration. We also learnt about periodic standing wave structures. We learned about superconductivity in Linux, how in normal conducting Linux the RF power dissipation is very high. So the efficiency uh, of transfer of uh, power from the uh, cavity to the beam is very low in a normal conducting planar. Most of the power is dissipated as heat in the walls of the cavity. By using superconducting structures, uh, we can uh, transfer the entire power into the beam. We also studied about the transverse dynamics of beams in Linux. So we saw how a quadrupole or a solenoid can be used for focusing. We studied about various focusing lattices like Fodo, Fofododo, the solenoid lattices, etc. And then we studied about the longitudinal dynamics of uh, beams in Linux. So we saw the region where the, uh, where the acceleration is stable. So for phase stability, the synchronous phase is chosen between minus pi by 2 and 0. So with all this now, we will study a different type of accelerating structure which is particularly used for acceleration of low energy uh, beams and this is known as the radio frequency quadrupole or the RFQ. Now for acceleration, uh, before acceleration the ions have to be produced, the charged particles have to be produced. So these are produced in an ion source. Now if you see the output energy of ion sources or let's say proton sources, so this is in the range of tens of kV. So the output energy is quite small. Now conventional accelerating structures like drift tube linear cannot accept beams at such low energies. Now in the DTL, so we are already familiar with the drift tube linear, it cannot be used for very low accelerating very low energies because there is a constraint, so there is a constraint on the minimum energy because of the dimensions of the drift tube. So we know that the cell length in the drift tube is equal to beta lambda. Now for low energies beta is very small. So the cell length will be very small. So this size of the drift tube will be very small. And the drift tube also includes quadrupole magnets for focusing the beam in the transverse direction. So there will not be sufficient space to put in the quadrupole inside the drift tubes for focusing the beam. So we can increase lambda but this will bring down the frequency and at low frequencies the transverse dimensions of the cavity will become very huge. So we have seen that uh, in a pillbox cavity the frequency is inversely related to the uh, radius of the cavity. So the transverse dimensions will become huge and the cavity will become very huge. So we cannot decrease the frequency. So at very low energies there is a constraint on accelerating charged particles using drift tube Lenac. So DTL cannot accept low velocity particles, there is a constraint on the minimum energy. 
there should be space for accommodating magnetic quadrupoles inside the drift tubes which at low energies is very small so quadrupoles cannot be accommodated inside the drift tubes also the beam needs to be bunched to inject into the detail so before putting it inside the detail the beam has to be bunched so you need to put in a buncher before the detail now the radio frequency quadrupole is a rf linac this can efficiently bunch focus and accelerate low energy beams so it is a very efficient structure it can accept a dc beam and then it can do the bunching uh, itself very efficiently and simultaneously it will focus and accelerate the low energy beams now if you see the proton linac layout before the rfq was uh, invented so that is uh, in the 1970 so we had first a cockroft volton which is a dc accelerator so which could uh, give energies uh, proton energies typically up to 750 kev or 1 mev and then followed by a buncher and then this beam was injected into a drift tube linac which would accelerate it to uh, intermediate energies of let's say 100 mev and then followed by a coupled cavity linac after the invention of the rfq so this system everywhere has been replaced by the radio frequency quadrupole so we now have an ion source which now gives beams of tens of uh, kev and then there is a rfq which can accept uh, beams of such low energy and then accelerate it to 2 to 7 mev so the output energy of the rfq is typically of this order and then followed by now we can have normal conducting structures or superconducting structures depending on the requirement so for example if you are accelerating a cw beam a superconducting accelerator would be more economical and then at high energies which are typically superconducting structures so now in all accelerators around the world the rfq has replaced this 750 kev cockroft volton puncher system so the rfq can directly take in the beam from the ion source it can bunch the beam and then accelerate the beam so the need for the buncher which was there earlier is eliminated now so rfq is a linac for accelerating low energy beams the beam accelerated in any rf linac it must be formed into bunches at the operating frequency before acceleration so typically bunches were used for bunching this beam in conventional bunches which is uh, simply a cavity followed by a drift space 30 to 50% of the beam is lost dc beam can be injected into the rfq the rfq first punches the beam with more than 90% efficiency and then accelerates the beam the beam is focused in the rfq using electric quadrupoles the rfq thus it focuses punches and accelerates the beam with high efficiency so this is particularly useful for high beam currents because we have focusing throughout the structure throughout the length of the rfq <clears throat> now let's see the working principle of the rfq so in the rfq we have four electrodes as shown in the figure here which are arranged in a quadrupolar manner so this these electrodes here they are arranged in a quadrupolar manner so four long electrodes are arranged in a quadrupolar fashion and uh, to these electrodes voltages of uh, opposite polarity is applied to all to the alternate electrodes these electrodes are known as vanes so if this if the both the horizontal uh, electrodes or vanes are at a potential of minus v0 by 2 the vertical vanes will be at a potential of plus v0 by 2 so this is like an electric quadrupole so for such a system the electric fields will be like this so you have an electric field starting from the positive electrode going to the negative electrode so the electric field lines are shown here so this is like a quadrupolar field so we have already studied the focusing in a electric quadrupole so here we see that the force in a due to electric field is proportional to the electric field so this type of uh, polarity of the uh, voltage will produce focusing in the y direction and defocusing in the x direction now the beam as the beam goes through it so at this location the beam experiences focusing in the y direction and defocusing in the x direction now let's say if these voltages vary sinusoidally with time 
so these voltages are now varying sinusoidally with time the voltage applied here this is varying sinusoidally with time that is the voltage changes polarity after time t by 2 so after time t by 2 the voltage changes polarity so the particles moving along the axis they will experience alternate gradient electric focusing which is more efficient than magnetic focusing for low velocity particles so at this instant the bunches uh, or the particles are here after time t by 2 they reach here and at that time the polarity changes so this becomes the horizontal veins become uh, at a positive potential and the vertical veins are now at a negative potential in this case it will focus the beam in the x direction and defocus the beam in the y direction so reverse from what was happening at this location then again as the beam moves ahead at this location the polarities will come back to the original uh, polarities and the beam will get focused in the y direction and defocused in the x direction and so on so in this way it experiences alternate gradient focusing and the net result will be that the beam will remain focused in both the directions so thus this is like a electric quadrupole uh, just like the photo type of focusing the beam is getting focused here so in this way the rfq focuses the beam now for such a system because the electron electrode geometry is uniform along the axis that is all the four electrodes are equidistant from the axis there is no axial electric field component for the acceleration of the particles okay now remember from the first lecture for acceleration using electric field there should be a component of electric field in the direction of velocity of the charge particle so in this direction in the z direction there should be a component of electric field whereas this type of uh, field an electric quadrupole has fields only in the x and y direction so if this is uniform if this electrodes are uniform uh, uh, if this geometry is uniform along the axis then there is no ez field now let's say the horizontal and vertical electrodes which are known as veins they are unequally displaced relative to the axis so that means let's say the horizontal veins are at a distance a from the axis the vertical veins are now taken at a distance m a from the axis where m is greater than 1 and is called the modulation parameter so the vertical uh, electrodes or the veins are displaced now with respect to the horizontal veins so now what happens a potential on the the potential on the axis will be non zero on this axis here the potential will be non zero but still there is no component of field in the z direction so if the perturbed geometry is maintained constant along the axial direction there will still be no axial electric field because there is no change in the axial potential now however if the electrode transverse electrode displacements are varied along the axis the axial potential will change as a function of longitudinal position and an axial electric field will be produced so now if this electrode geometry in the z direction if it is now displaced or if it is modulated then an axial electric field will be produced so let's say this is the unmodulated vein so that means the vein is flat like this okay the vein is flat like this so this is the z direction and this is the y direction now electric field lines are always perpendicular to the surface so here you can see that the electric field line is only in the y direction okay so this is the vertical vein so we see that the electric field lines are only in the y direction similarly for the horizontal vein if we plot the electric field lines will be only in the uh, x direction so there will be only transverse field now however if you modulate this surface if you modulate this surface of the veins as shown here so this is the uh, these are the two vertical veins the blue ones and the red ones are the horizontal veins so we see that the surface is now modulated instead of having a flat surface like this the vein surface is now modulated like this so in this case a component of electric field is generated in the z direction we'll see how so in an 
unmodulated way there is no component of electric field in the z direction the longitudinal fields for acceleration are produced by modulating the electrodes longitudinally so here we have modulated the electrodes the horizontal and vertical electrode displacements are out of phase spatially so when the uh, horizontal vanes are at a distance a from the axis the vertical vanes are at a distance b which is equal to ma from the axis now because of modulation now this vane will now come close to the axis after some time so when this is the vertical vanes are at a distance a from the axis the horizontal vanes will be at a distance ma from the axis so the horizontal and vertical electrode displacements are out of phase spatially so now we see that how due to modulation electric field is produced so this is the surface of the vane which is now modulated like this so earlier it was flat like this now it has been modulated like this so when it was flat like this the electric field was all in this direction that is in the x direction okay now after modulation since the electric field lines still have to be perpendicular to the surface of the vane so we have electric field lines like this so you see that you will get a component of electric field now in the z direction also so there will be a component of electric field in the x direction and a component of electric field in the z direction as well so by introducing the modulations in the electrodes a part of the original transverse field is deviated into the longitudinal direction so originally the field was all in the transverse direction when there was no modulation and now with modulation we have because the electric field lines still have to be perpendicular to the surface so now we have a component of electric field along the z direction in addition to that in the transverse direction so thus we have been able to generate a component of electric field in the direction of velocity of the charged particle which is required for acceleration now let's see how the vanes are modulated in the rf cube so these blue ones are the vertical vanes and the red ones are the horizontal vanes so the vertical and the horizontal vanes so these two vanes so i am here i am showing the modulation of the one vertical vane and one horizontal vane so they are out of phase with each other so this is the beam axis this is the vertical vane so this is the modulation of the vertical vane and this is the horizontal vane this vane and this is the modulation of the horizontal vane so you can see here that when the vertical vane is at a distance ma from the axis the horizontal vane is at a distance a from the axis similarly now when the vertical vane is at a distance a from the axis the vertical vane is at a distance ma from the axis so thus the horizontal and vertical vanes are out of phase with each other in terms of spatial modulation now if you consider two vertical vanes so here are the two vertical vanes shown in blue so the two vertical vanes are in blue so when the uh, uh, top verti uh, top uh, vertical vane is at a distance ma from the axis the bottom vertical vane is also at a distance ma from the axis when the top vertical vane comes close to the axis that is a the bottom vertical vane also comes close to the axis so that is they are spatially in phase with each other so this is how the vanes are modulated now let's see how the fields look like due to this type of modulation so here is shown the vertical vane the, this top one is the vertical vane so this is in the y direction and uh, in the bottom is shown the uh, horizontal vane so this is the x direction and this is the beam axis this is the z direction so the horizontal and vertical vane are the modulations are out of phase with each other now let's consider this region for the vertical vane 
Now at this instant of time, let's say the vertical vane is at a potential of V0 by 2. So the horizontal vane will be at a potential of minus V0 by 2. So you can see here the electric field line is perpendicular to this surface. It is in this direction for the vertical vane. This can be resolved into x and y components like this. So this is the x component and this is the y component. So it can be resolved into x and y component. So we see that, sorry, this is the z component. So it can be, so this can be resolved into the z and y component here. So the z component here is in the forward direction due to the vertical way. Now let us uh, see the, uh, let us see the direction of the fields due to the horizontal vane. So the direction of the electric field will be again perpendicular to the surface. So if we resolve it, this is the EZ field and this is the EX field. So EZ field is in the negative direction. But remember now this is at a voltage. The horizontal vane is at a voltage minus V0 by 2. So the net or the effective direction will be the forward direction. So the electric field in the z direction due to the vertical vane as well as due to the horizontal vane is in the forward direction. So any charge particle here or any bunch here will experience acceleration. Now let's see the electric field due to this part. So here again if I take the electric field it will be perpendicular to the surface. I can resolve it into an EZ component and an EY component. The EZ component uh, is in the negative direction. So it is decelerating. Now if I calculate the field due to the uh, horizontal vane. So again this field is perpendicular to the surface. So I have an EZ component and an EX component. The EZ is in this direction, forward direction. But remember the voltage is minus V0 by 2 at this instant of time. So the net direction of the electric field in the z direction will be decelerating. So in this half, the direction of the EZ field is accelerating and in this part, the direction of the electric field is decelerating. So if there is a beam bunch here, it will experience an accelerating field here. Now if it moves from here to here in time, T by 2 because remember the potential here in the veins is varying with time. After time T by 2 the potential reverses. So this will become plus V, v by 2 and this will become minus V by 2. So if the bunch reaches from here to here in time T by 2 then the field will change direction. So this bunch will again experience an accelerating force. So in this way by modulating the surface of the veins, we can generate an electric field uh, in the z direction and uh, by synchronizing the particle with the field, we can ensure that the particle always sees a accelerating field. So in this way, the RFQ accelerates the beam. Now beam bunching in the RFQ. Now a conventional buncher which we studied in the last lecture is a pillbox cavity or a single cavity operating at synchronous phase of minus 90 degrees followed by a drift space. Now bunching is done in a single shot. So there is just this cavity followed by a drift space. So bunching efficiency is low. So typically the bunching efficiency is 30 to 50 percent. In a RFQ, the initial many cells, they are dedicated to beam bunching. So unlike here where the bunching is done in a single shot, here many cells are dedicated to beam bunching. So the synchronous phase is kept at minus 90 degree where the separatrix has a maximum phase width in these cells and the vein modulation is very gradually increased from 1. So the synchronous phase is also gradually increased from minus 90. So in this way we are able to capture the beam more efficiently and bunch the beam more efficiently. Only when the bunching is complete the modulation is increased and the beam is accelerated. So beam capture and bunching efficiency in this case is more than 90%. So RFQ is the only RF LINAC that can accept a DC beam. In all other RF LINACs, you have to first bunch the beam 
and then inject it into the LINAC. Whereas in the RFQ, you can inject a DC beam, the RFQ itself will bunch the beam. So this is the RFQ. So this is the quadrupolar field due to the four veins and you can see the modulation which produces an electric field in the Z direction due to which the beam gets accelerated. So this is again some pictures of the RFQ. So this is showing one fourth of the RFQ. These are two veins and here you can see the modulations on the veins. This is another picture of the RFQ. So these are the four veins, one, two, three and four. So this is the region in which the beam gets accelerated. 